Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at the solutions to questions 1 to 5 of the Junior Kangaroo paper from 2019. That's the follow-on round from the Junior Maths Challenge paper for those students that have done really well in that competition. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've taken all of the questions from the Junior Kangaroo from 2019 as well as the Junior Olympiad from 2019 and put them into a totally free online course. So you can go over to that online course by clicking at the link in the description below and you can work through all of these questions one at a time and then watch my video solutions. I've also got a totally free course over there going through the Junior Maths Challenges from 2020 and 2021 if you haven't already seen that and I'll put that in the link, that link in the description below as well. Um, if you haven't already taken the Junior Maths Challenge, the best place to start would be with the Junior Maths Challenge papers and then go on to the Kangaroo and the Olympiad papers once you're ready for them. In question one, Rihanna has been asked to erase digits from the number 12323314 to obtain a number which reads the same from left to right as it does from right to left. Uh, those sorts of numbers or words that have the same property are often called uh, palindromes, uh, something that reads the same forwards as it does backwards. And uh, it says, what is the smallest number of digits that Rihanna needs to uh, erase? Well, uh, the first thing we notice is that there's a four at the end and it's the only four. So if this is going to read the same front and back and the four stayed in, um, it would have to be the only number that was left. So we are definitely going to have to get rid of the four. And then we're left with one, two, three, two, three, three, one. Now I can make a palindrome here by, for example, I could get rid of the twos. Then one, three, 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 one would be left. Um, I could also get rid of the uh, threes here and leave one, two, three, two, one. Um, I could also get rid of this two and do one, three, two, three, and then get rid of one of these threes, one. That, they would all read the same front and back. So I've had to delete two more. And so we can definitely get a palindrome by removing three digits in total, the four, and then one of those combinations of two, which would give us the answer C. And just to make sure that the answer isn't two, there's no easier way to do it. You just want to go through and check. Uh, okay, if I just remove one digit from this number, if I just got rid of the one, no, that's not a palindrome. And you can just go through and check each individual digit you remove here doesn't give a palindrome. So we do need to do uh, at least that many. And we can be confident then that the answer is C3. In question two, the diagram shows squares of three different sizes arranged into a rectangle. The length of each side of the smallest squares is 20 centimeters. Adamant walks along the path marked from P to Q, and we want to know how far does Adam walk. So we've got three different sizes of squares, and it says the smallest are 20. So these ones must be the smallest size squares, either the ones here and the ones here, they must be equal. And we can see the other two sizes here are uh, squares like this. This uh, side length would be two of the smaller squares. So this would be a side length of 40. And then the final size of square, we've got this large one here. And um, we can see that that lines up against three of the smaller squares. So that must be uh, of length 60. So we can go through this whole path, either just counting up how many small squares there are in total and times it by 20, or I could add together the individual parts on the path. So I've got a 20 here, 20 going across, 40 going down, 40 going across here. Let me erase the uh, 40 here so I don't get confused later. Uh, another 40 going down, 40 going across, 40 going down, 60 across, 60 up, and then I've got 20, 20, and 20, and I just need to add uh, all of these together. Um, or alternatively, I think the way I did this when I first uh, saw this question was to just say, count how many 20s there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then in total, there's 21 lots of 20, uh, which is 21 times 2 times 10, which is 42 times 10, or 420 centimetres. And so the answer there is C. And you'd get the same thing, of course, by just adding up all of the red numbers that I've written on this diagram. In question three, a bridge is built across a river. One quarter of the bridge is over the left bank and one third is over the right bank. The river is 120 metres wide. How long is the bridge? So I think you're meant to uh, be able to try to sort of picture this. So I've got some uh, river here and, okay, you know, um, 
uh, I'm going to draw this all totally flat and two-dimensional and the only way we can make sense of this question really is to be sort of thinking of it as a plan drawing so when it says one quarter of the bridge is over the left bank um, that means that my bridge is going to look something like this over some point of the the, the river and you know this bit here is going to represent one quarter of the bridge a third of it's going to be over the right hand bank of the river and the river itself is 120 meters wide at least at the point where the bridge is here so uh, so that'll be 120 meters so all we need to do is work out what fraction of the bridge the 120 meters would be uh, so we can do one quarter plus one third uh, if we write those both in twelfths we get three twelfths plus uh, four twelfths so that must be seven twelfths uh, and that means that uh, five twelfths uh, the remaining part is the 120 meters right so 120 meters is like five twelfths so if I want the whole length of the bridge um, I can uh, say uh, divide this by 5 and times by 12 so 1 12th would be equal to 120 divided by 5 which is 24 and then the whole bridge would be 24 times 12 okay I know this is a uh, very so it's not great notation to write 1 12th equals 24 I mean if you want uh, you could uh, perhaps it would be better if I wrote an x here as well and where x is the full uh, length of the bridge and then I could write x equals 24 times 12 um, so you've just got to do the multiplication here or you can say this is 12 squared times 2 you might know 12 squared is 144 so I just need to times that by 2 and get 288 fine to just do the calculations in maths challenges as a long multiplication um, but the more arithmetic uh, arithmetic tricks you know uh, the quicker you can do some of these questions anyway I've got the answer here and it's d 288 meters Question four, it says, in four years time, Evie will be three times older than she was two years ago. How old will Evie be in one year's time? Two ways to do this question. I think a lot of people would tell you just to leap into algebra here. Um, but the maths challenge questions have multiple choice answers here. The kangaroo has the, these multiple choice options. And we can save ourselves some time occasionally by just using those. So um, if this is how old she is in one year's time, we could say, okay, how old will she be in four years' time uh, in, in each of these cases? Well, um, she'll be three years older than she is in one year's time. So she'd be five, six, uh, seven, nine, or ten in these cases. And two years ago, um, well, if she's two in one year's time, uh, two years ago she would have been minus one. So I don't think that's going to be the answer. Um, here, in the same here, it would be uh, zero. We've got to basically subtract three from each of these. So that would be one, um, three, and four here. And it says we need one of these to be the four year in four years' time. She's three times older than she was two years ago. And we can just see from these options then that uh, this one here, nine is three times three, so it's three, three. So she's three times older in four years than she was two years ago. And the answer must be D six. Uh, and then we're done. Now, um, of course, if it wasn't a multiple choice question, or if you just like doing these things directly, you could also write this down um, algebraically. So we could say, let uh, x be uh, Evie's age now. Then in four years' time, she would be x plus 4. And x plus 4 needs to be three times how old she was uh, two years ago. So that needs to be three times x minus 2 which would be her age two years ago. So we could also solve the equation x plus 4 equals 3x minus 6, multiplying out the brackets here. Uh, so that gives us 10 uh, is equal to 2x, and so x equals 5. And now, of course, uh, if Evie is 5 now, in one year's time, she'll be 6. Uh, so there's another way to do it with algebra. So if you're fast with algebra, maybe that's quick or just as quick. But don't be afraid in the maths challenge to use the multiple choice options it's meant to be uh, a bit about your sort of mental agility and solving the questions in the time as well in question five we've got two rectangles of dimensions 8 by 10 and 9 by 12 and they overlap as shown in the diagram the area of the black region is 37 uh, centimeters squared what's the area of the gray region uh, so I've just made a bigger copy of the picture here so I can write on it easily. So this bit is 37 centimetres squared. Um, we 
know the areas of the rectangles individually, of course. This one is 8 by 10, which is 80, and 9 uh, times 12 is 108. Uh, so that's the area of this rectangle. We want the area of the gray region. The easiest way to see this is just to say, well, okay, uh, we know the total of the whole shape because it would just be, you know, this uh, rectangle here plus the 37. Okay, so the total area here is 108 plus 37, which is 145. And then if I just want uh, the gray bit, I can take the total of the whole overlapping shape and get rid of the green part and that will just leave this gray uh, area here so the gray area is going to be 145 um, minus 80 uh, and that will give 65 centimeters squared and so the answer here is e so i really hope that was useful if you're preparing for maths challenges either the junior maths challenge or the kangaroo or the olympiad papers don't forget about my online courses uh, I'll put the link in the description below. There's free courses there at the moment working through the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020 and 2021 with hints and solutions. And uh, there are other courses about the Junior Maths Challenge and preparing for maths challenges over there already. And over the coming months and years, I'm going to be making uh, a lot more content as well. So sign up for the mailing list if you want to know about that or keep checking back here on YouTube uh, or over at the Maths Source website.